listen. What do you hear? The song of 12,000 horsepower in action. Thousands of precision parts operating in flashing unison, obedient to the control of the skilled pilot and crew. Yet it takes a nightmarish panel of sensitive and complicated instruments and controls to adjust the power output for changing loads, speeds, and conditions in flight. Listen again. What do you hear? The familiar sound of a fine motor car engine. More than a hundred horsepower, responsive to the driver's lightest touch on the accelerator. Yet this fine engine must be constantly controlled all the time it's in operation to keep its power in balance with changing requirements. Again, what do you hear? The purr of an electric generator. As electrical power loads vary, as conditions vary, throughout the minutes, hours, days, weeks, and months, so must the power be regulated by watchful operators to keep the generator turning at constant speed. What do you hear? You guessed it. The beating of a human heart. One of the most amazing machines on Earth. The normal human pulse is between 70 and 80 beats per minute. Yet this rhythm varies every time we move or change position. Like this when we are resting. Like this when we are running or at play. And changing too with our emotions when we are happy, angry, or frightened. Listen. What do you hear now? That's right, the ticking of a watch. An accurate watch ticks five times each second. Like the engines of airplane and motor car, like the generator, like the human heart, your watch is a power plant that must operate unfailingly under an infinite variety of conditions. Yet, unlike our heartbeat, the beat of this tiny power plant must never vary. Unlike the giant generator, it has no tons of concrete on which to rest solid, level, and safe from vibrations which might affect its accuracy. There are no watchful attendants, no careful drivers, no skilled pilots, no banks of instruments and controls to regulate its speed and guard its accuracy. What controls the ticking of a watch? Inside, we find a beautifully poised and balanced mechanism of springs and gears, pinions and bearings. And this entire mechanism must be confined to a very small space. Still, it must run at a constant speed. Never more, never less, with an accuracy that approaches perfection. To understand what goes on inside a watch, let's make a simple device that will keep time. We'll use a garden hose. First, we'll place a little water wheel and dial in the center. When water passes through, it will turn the wheel and make the hand on the dial move. Now we'll attach the hose to a faucet. The faucet is our source of power. The hose conducts the water, our power in this case, past the dial to the nozzle. The nozzle controls the flow of power. By turning the nozzle, we can allow just a little water to flow through the hose, and the hand on the dial will turn slowly. By opening the nozzle wider, we allow a heavy stream of water to flow through the hose, and the hand on the dial turns faster if our source of power, the water pressure, remained constant, and if we could adjust the nozzle carefully enough, we would have a timepiece that would keep accurate time. Here, in a greatly simplified form, we have the four elements needed in every timepiece. A source of energy or power, a means of transmitting power, a dial to record the flow of power, and a way to control the power. 
Now let's see what these four elements are like in our watch. First, we'll take our watch apart, like this. We'll begin with this part, the mainspring and barrel assembly. And so we can see everything that goes on inside, let's use giant parts to make a watch model. This is the mainspring, and it lives inside the mainspring barrel. The mainspring is the power plant of the watch, the source of power, like the faucet in our water clock. By winding the spring, we can store up energy. Here is a winding stem with gears and a click to keep the spring from unwinding. And here is the unit that controls the flow of power, like the nozzle on our hose. It is called the balance wheel and hairspring assembly. It consists of the balance wheel, hairspring, balance staff or axle. Fastened to the balance staff is a part called a roller. To the roller is attached an upright jewel pin. Let's see how these work together. A push on the jewel pin will start the balance wheel moving and more pushes will keep it moving. To do this job of pushing, we need this odd anchor-shaped lever called a pallet. It can be mounted so that when we move the pallet back and forth, we can apply a series of impulses to the jewel pin to keep the balance wheel in motion. Now to the pallet cross arm, we add a pallet jewel shaped like this. Here is a wheel called an escape wheel with teeth on it so shaped that they will push the pallet jewel and jog the balance wheel into motion. Now we'll use the energy stored up in our mainspring to drive the escape wheel. As the mainspring uncoils, it causes the barrel to rotate with it. That didn't last long, did it? Let's try it again. Once things get started, there's nothing to stop them. What we need now is a way of holding the power in check, releasing it a little at a time just when it's needed. Another pallet jewel at the other end of the pallet cross arm will do the trick. Just as the first pallet jewel gets a push from the escape wheel, the second pallet jewel locks against another tooth of the escape wheel to hold the power of the mainspring in check. But the balance wheel keeps swinging and the jewel pin moves the fork end of the pallet until the escape wheel is again unlocked. But when we connect the mainspring directly to the escape wheel, the power is soon exhausted. In an actual watch, it would last only a few seconds. What we need is a way to stretch the power so it will last for more than a day. In our water clock, we used a hose to transmit power from the faucet to the nozzle. We also need a way to transmit power here. So let's add a system of gears and wheels. We'll stretch them out in a line instead of in their usual closely confined location in a watch. Look at the gears a moment and see what they do. First, a small partial turning of the mainspring barrel drives the center wheel a complete revolution.